Let's have a closer look at a very special hypercar which should reach production this year, the AMG Project 1. But to understand this project, how it was designed and why it is what it is, we first need to take a look back in history. There are five companies that play a role here. Mercedes-Benz, AMG, HWA, the Mercedes Formula 1 team in Brackley and Mercedes AMG HPP in Brixworth. So let's have a look at how they work together and how they are connected with each other. In 1926, Daimler and Benz merged and became Mercedes-Benz. At this time, Mercedes was already a huge and established car manufacturer with a professional motorsport department, which was dominating the world of motorsport. This continued throughout the 1930s and also after the war until the more 1955, when a Mercedes was involved in the most tragic motorsport crash to date. The result was that Mercedes stopped all motorsport activities for the following decades. In 1967, Erhard Melcher and Hans-Werner Aufrecht, both working in the technical development of Mercedes and tuning Mercedes cars in their free time, decided to quit their jobs and started their own business. Aufrecht, Melcher, Groß Asbach, in short, AMG. They specialized in tuning Mercedes cars and successfully raced in different categories. The company grew, became more professional, and when Mercedes decided on their motorsport comeback at the end of the 1980s, they chose AMG as their partner for the Touring Car Works team. The partnership was very successful and Touring Car Racing became more and more popular. But because the Touring Cars of the mid-1990s were more expensive than Formula 1 cars, the series collapsed at the end of the 1996 season. Mercedes wanted to stay in motorsport, and AMG needed a new project for their motorsport department. The result was the Mercedes CLK GTR, which they designed in just 113 days from the first idea to the first test. It was the first car that AMG designed by themselves from scratch. They won the 1997 season and even won every single race of the GT1 championship in 1998. During that time, Mercedes bought 51% of AMG and the company was split. The road car division stayed with Mercedes and the motorsport department was refounded as HWA, the initials of the founder Hans Werner Aufrecht. HWA, so the motorsport department, built the street versions of the CLK GTR and later on developed and built the DTM and GT3 race cars for Mercedes. This business structure is still the same until today. The first road car that AMG designed by themselves is the SLS. The GT3 race version on the other hand is based on the SLS but comes from HWA. Parallel to that, Mercedes started a cooperation with Ilmor in 1993 and from 1994 the F1 engines were branded as Mercedes. In 2005 Mercedes bought the rest of the shares and the company became a 100% Mercedes company. Mercedes HPP today in Brixworth. The long cooperation between McLaren and Mercedes engines was very successful and won multiple championships. When Ross Brown asked McLaren's Martin Whitmarsh if he could have Mercedes engines for 2009, Whitmarsh agreed and Brown GP went on to win the 2009 championship with Mercedes engines. Brown GP was a small and relatively cheap team with good facilities that just won the championship. So, at the end of the 2009 season, Mercedes decided to buy the team with hopes to win the 2010 season straight away as the Mercedes works team. But that didn't work. Braun only concentrated on 2009 and the team needed three seasons to become competitive again. It is dominating F1 since the new hybrid era started in 2014. To celebrate the success and to bring F1 technology to road cars, Mercedes decided to create a new supercar with an adjusted F1 engine, the Project 1. And because AMG is responsible for sporty Mercedes road cars, Mercedes HPP gave their 1.6 liter V6 engine to AMG in Affalterbach. The job for AMG was now to build a supercar around this engine. The main difference to the previous supercar CLK GTR from Affalterbach is that not the motorsport department of AMG is designing it, but the road car department. They previously designed cars like the SLS, a great sports car, 
but also a car that is closer to a conventional road car than to a supercar. For the project one, AMG also took over the concept of a fully stressed engine and gearbox and the pushrod suspension system with separate roll and heave elements. So there was a very good basis to create an amazing supercar. To be able to drive electrically and also not to touch the system from Bricksworth, they additionally placed two electric motors at the front axle and packaged a two-part battery underneath the passenger's legs. This creates an F1 style seating position with its raised legs. If we now look at the package from above, we can see that the passengers are sitting relatively far away from each other. For cars like the Bugatti Bolide, that's understandable because there is a gearbox in the middle. But it's a bit of a surprise to see this big distance here because there is no essential component sitting there. And it's like moving into a bigger flat. First you think you have so much more space and a few weeks later everything is filled with stuff. The F1 engine gives the opportunity to build a very slim package but it looks like AMG did not use this here. The cabin width is a very important factor for packaging and performance of the car. It influences the frontal area, the possible side pod width, the overall weight and the flow to the back of the car. Another interesting component is the gearbox. It's a new design for the Project 1 with originally 8 gears. Because they ran into weight issues, they reduced it to 7 gears. If we take a closer look at the package, we can see that the drive shafts are sitting at a weird angle. Usually you would try to reduce the angle of the drive shafts as much as possible to reduce drivetrain friction and to increase lifetime. And if one gearbox has the gearbox first, then the diff. The AMG box has the diff first and then the gearbox. A more conventional design and also one that AMG is used to from SLS and GTS. But it looks like they wanted to achieve a certain wheelbase and pushed the rear axle backwards. Hence the angled drive shafts. Also, the gearbox is a stressed member, like the F1 gearbox. But the AMG box is even wider than the engine. And this is preventing a slim rear end. Of course, this is a road car and it has to last longer than an F1 car, but the Project 1 gearbox looks like they have been overly cautious and used an extreme safety factor. Or simply speaking, they used the same design standards like for an E-Class. Let's have a look at the intake system now. The F1 car has one intake scoop, one large air filter on top of the plenum and one pipe running down to the turbocharger inlet. For some reason, they split the intake into two parts at the Project 1. The air flows through two air filters, one either side, joins back again and enters the turbo. One reason to do this could be packaging, because they could not fit the single pipe between monocoque and engine. The F1 car has a pocket in the chassis for this, but this would make the road car monocoque shape a bit more complex. So the result is the split design and the space above the plenum stays empty. Interesting is also the exhaust system. We see the exhaust pipe exiting from the bell housing like on the F1 car and then it splits to run through two parallel cuts and into one large muffler behind the gearbox. To avoid heating problems when the car is racing, you usually design the muffler in a way that the exhaust gas is passing through as quickly as possible at high revs when the exhaust valves are open. That way your muffler does not overheat and you have less temperature problems at the back, which could result in the need for heat resistant materials or larger air outlets and so on. The tailpipe looks like the F1 tailpipe with its two wastegate screamer pipes, but here is just a design feature because there are no separate wastegate pipes running to the back. Another thing we can see here is that the lower wishbones are arrow shaped because they are exposed underneath the car. But for a street legal car, where the rule book is pretty open, you would have assumed that they would try harder to raise the gearbox structure to enable a decent diffuser surface. Also, the muffler and tailpipe position is preventing an efficient center diffuser surface from happening. With the kind of package they had available, I was hoping they would create a car with more through flow and maybe even some kind of side pod cooling. But instead, the Project 1 is a pretty conventional car. More through flow would allow much more aero performance and would also create a more sophisticated design, which would clearly separate it from conventional cars. Let's have a look at cooling now. 
these F1 engines are mostly cooled by oil, but they do have a small high temperature water radiator. Additionally, they have a low temperature water cycle for MGUK, MGUH and the battery. The battery in these high performance hybrid applications can work at higher temperatures than normal EV batteries and can be in the same cycle with electric motors. I would not be surprised if the Project 1 has a separate low temperature water cycle for the Bricksworth components, but it is possible that one cycle is cooling all of these components. Since there are electric motors in front, it's likely that the low temperature water radiator is sitting in front too. Additionally, there is an air conditioning system and it looks like we can see the condensers either side. Because of the large air outlet in front of the windscreen, I would guess that there is the main water radiator in the center of the front. But in recent test drives, we could see that this air outlet was covered. There are some smaller intakes in front of the rear axle, but in this position, they are likely to catch front rear wake and cooling wouldn't be effective. Interesting are the two large naked ducts and louvers on the engine cover. This could be for low temperature water or oil cooling. Now let's have a look at aerodynamics. If we look at the front, we can see large air intakes and a small splitter. The air intakes are framed by these scoops, which helps to get more air into the intakes if your front surface is too round. And it's also a popular design feature in the current car industry. Interesting here is to see the parking sensors and the front camera, which is a bit unusual in the hypercar world. But it shows again that AMG applied the traditional car standards to this car. There are active louvers on top of the front wheel arches to help to increase downforce. The inlet area of the roof scoop looks a bit larger than on the F1 car and it's raised above the roof to clear the boundary layer. It would be interesting to see if it can clear the hot air coming out of the center outlet. Usually cars with the roof scoop are designed with an outlet either side to not disturb the flow towards the roof. Behind the front axle is a large cutout to release air from the front wheel arches and a possible front diffuser. During test drives, this cover was not fitted. The rest of the bodywork towards the rear is very smooth with no big surprises. The engine cover features a shark fin that increases high speed stability. The rear has large outlets to release hot air from the engine bay. At the sides, we can see blades to separate the side air flow and to keep the rear wheel wake away from the diffuser. The diffuser itself could have been bigger with the exhaust in a different position. The Project 1 has an active rear wing with a second element in the center. Advantage is that it's smoothly integrated when folded. The disadvantage is that it mounts from below and reduces the effective suction area of the wing. Furthermore, there is a pocket underneath the wing when it's raised, which will interfere with the flow underneath the wing. Let's look at some numbers. AMG states that the top speed will be over 350 km per hour and the downforce will be around 675 kg. If we assume an air density of 1.2 kg per cubic meter, we get an CL times A of 1.17. If we then assume a frontal area of 1.8 square meter, we get a lift coefficient of minus 0.65. Looking at the car, that seems realistic. That's enough to keep the car on the road, but it's far less than other hypercars like the Valkyrie or the T50. Looking at the packed front and the large exposed rear wing, I would assume that the downforce balance is well rear biased. Also, if we then calculate that for lower speeds, it's actually 30% less than a LaFerrari and 40% less than a McLaren P1. And balance is another topic to talk about here. At demo runs of a prototype, the extensive suspension travel of the car was surprising. The car rolled and pitched with so much movement that it looked unlike any other hypercar in this class. Of course, this is just a prototype and I'm sure AMG will sort out everything before production starts, but it shows that this is definitely new to AMG. So in summary, the AMG Project 1 is a very special car and it's already a classic. It's a great way to celebrate the F1 success for Mercedes and it's the perfect opportunity for AMG to make the next step to become a hypercar manufacturer and to attract a new group of very wealthy customers. But looking at the construction and the competition, it seems like AMG was quite conservative and left a lot of performance on the table. 
If other companies start such a project, they usually do it with an experienced motorsport partner, like Bugatti did it with the Lara for the Bolide. So the question is, would some involvement of HWA would have helped here, like they did it 20 years ago with the CLK GTR? What's your opinion on the upcoming AMG Project 1? Let me know in the comments below.